Today we're going to talk about the Ruby Spears produced Superman 1988 animated Saturday morning television series that aired on CBS. Fights the never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way. It came out the same year as the live-action syndicated Superboy TV series, which at the time was the 50th anniversary of Superman's creation. The 88 Ruby Spears Superman had DC Comics' Marv Wolfman as the head story editor, and comic artist Gil Kane provided character designs. Superman had previously had a cartoon series produced by Filmation and was a member of the Super Friends, of course, which almost all kids from the 70s and 80s watched one time or another. Now this series took its inspiration from Superman the movie where they adapted the John Williams score into the intro. Faster than a speeding bullet. As well as the uh, opening narrative for the George Reeves Superman way back in the 1950s. Faster than a speeding bullet. And off of the John Byrne revamp in the comics that happened in 1986. Now, uh, this was a reboot of Superman that had been in the work since Crisis on Infinite Earths, where DC editors and Marv Wolfman had been planning to redo Superman by deleting his career as Superboy in the comics. They also wanted to lower Superman's powers and change Lex Luthor somehow. Now, when John Byrne left Marvel, it gave DC an opportunity to hire him on to do the, uh, the Superman reboot. The result was the Man of Steel miniseries that started Superman over from scratch before leading into the new Superman for the 80s and action comics in his rebooted title Superman. Burns run made Superman's cape no longer indestructible and he turned Lex Luthor into an evil tycoon businessman instead of just an evil scientist. Krypton was radically changed which to me was probably the worst part of what Burns did. Everything else was great though. It worked pretty pretty well. But as a longtime Superman reader, I do miss the older pre-crisis stories of the Silver Age. It seems the older those stories get to me, the better they get. Now, if you'd like me to do a video on the burn run sometime, just let me know in the comments below. The 88 cartoon version of Luther used the same kind of Luther as the 86 comics. No longer was Luther running around in that same purple uniform, living in the Hall of Doom as he was in the Super Friends. Now he was living in Metropolis in control of a huge business empire. Now the Daily Planet characters were all there. Superman was voiced by Bo Weaver, who went on to do the voice of Mr. Fantastic in the 1994 Fantastic Four animated series. But I can't give up! Jimmy Olsen wore a tie instead of the bow tie. And Lois had a 80s style haircut. Besides the regular Superman adventures, the show had a segment entitled The Superman Family Album, which devoted a few minutes every episode to Clark Kent's adventures as a super kid. It showcased Clark's life growing up. We got to see Clark as a baby, his first day at school, his first shopping trip, and Clark Kent's driving test. Not a little more! Lex Luthor was voiced by Michael Bell, who did the voice of Bruce Banner in the 80s Hulk cartoon, Duke in the G.I. Joe series, Plastic Man, Zan and Gleek on the Super Friends, and a lot of other cartoons of the 80s. Luthor wasn't the only Superman character to show up on this series. Zod made an appearance in the episode The Hunter. The Prankster shows up in the episode Triple Play. He was voiced by Howard Morris, a.k.a. Ernest T. Bass from The Andy Griffith Show. And a ton of cartoon voices, including the voice of Adam Ant, the Hanna-Barbera superhero Ant of the 60s. Jonathan Kent was voiced by Alan Oppenheimer. He was Rudy Wells from the Six Men Are Man from 73 to 74. He also did the voice of Frady Cat, a 70s cartoon series I totally missed back, uh, back in the day. And that's F-R-A-I-D-Y, no relation. Perry White was voiced by Stanley Ralph Ross, who wrote for the 66 Adam West Batman series on every fourth episode. And he wrote a lot of the shows for the Monkees, and he did development work on the Wonder Woman TV series with Linda Carter in 1975. Now, Tress McNeil was the voice of Martha Kent. She went on to uh, do the voice of Dot from the Animaniacs. 
Jenny McSwain did the voice of Lois Lane, and she's listed on IMDb as voice director for a huge number of animated series. Mark L. Taylor was the voice of Jimmy Olsen. He played on movies like Inner Space and Honey, I Shrank the Kids. Wonder Woman guest starred in the episode Superman and Wonder Woman versus the Sorceress of Time. I'll get this one! They were 13 episodes in all, and you can get the entire series on DVD at Amazon. I'll put my Amazon affiliate link in the description below if you're interested. Any purchase through that link helps out the channel as I do get a commission. And hey, if you like comic books with a 70s and 80s vibe, then check out my book, Liberty Ace. I did all the art and the writing. It's about a superhero from a world that is inhabited by American space pioneers. He eventually comes to our planet, but when he first arrives, the Earth isn't in the shape it used to be in. If you like it, consider leaving a review on Amazon. It's kind of a chicken and egg kind of thing, you know, selling books. You can hardly sell books without reviews, and you can't get reviews without first getting sales. So if you would do that, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, for animation lovers, I've got another channel dedicated to family-friendly cartoons in my own creation called Freddy Cat Cartoons. Uh, no relation to the 70s Freddy Cat I just talked about. It's spelled differently. My last name being F-R-A-D-Y. And well, when your name is Freddy, people have a tendency to call you Freddy Cat. So, you just go with it. Um, back to this channel. If you love classic TV and especially classic TV superheroes, then please subscribe to the TV Crazy Man channel and hit the bell for future pop culture videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and share the video. Helps out the channel a lot. Thanks and uh, have a great day.